welcome to another Flash Game Making video blog. Um, after that last episode, the mistakes I made, uh, I think I really shouldn't be calling these tutorials, but sort of just sort of uh, cataloging my adventures learning ActionScript, Flixel, and Nape. Um, for the next episode, or group of episodes, um, I'll just go over some more basic Nape things and Flixel things to get something like this uh, spaceship game set up. Um, uh, so as we go through, um, maybe as I develop this, this game, uh, I will take notes of things that I think might be interesting and um, share them with those who are watching. Um, so let's get started. Um, let's take a look at our code that we should have from our last episode, which is right here. Um, let's run it real quick to remember what we have. Uh, okay, there. So, ooh, I shouldn't be showing that yet because <laughs> we didn't get that far. But. I think what I had before is, let's control Z that a few times. Um, okay, that's what we had before. Um, to get things moving um, is very easy. Um, we just have to call the step uh, function of our space uh, that our objects are in. So our space is called MySpace, uh, which is you know, original name that I came up with. Um, so <laughs> let's get that moving. So myspace dot step, ooh, 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 step, it's as easy as that. And it just needs a delta time. And for this, uh, Flixel has a delta timer built into it. So under Flixel's Flix G, we just reference the elapsed property, which uh, just keeps track of how much time has passed since the last uh, render in the Flash player. Um, and um, step may want uh, this velocity in iterations and position iterations. I think you can turn that up above 10 to uh, get more accurate simulations, but uh, I don't think we need to do that. So we'll just leave those as is by not putting anything. And we'll close it out and run it. And there's a circle falling. So yes, that's all there is to getting things moving because our body is already in the space and the space just does its does its magic so next let's get to know nape a little more intimately <laughs> so to so to speak so um let's look at the body class um and the things that are inside here uh Let's look at its properties to start with. Um, so here are some of the properties that it has. Um, it has uh, body type, which uh, as you may remember when we were making our uh, circle that falls, when we created it, it took a body type dynamic. So what is this dynamic? Uh, let's take a look at that in the, let's close that. Uh, in the thing. So uh, let's take a look at body type. And as you can see, it has three properties itself. Uh, we have static, dynamic, and kinematic. Um, um, dynamic, the one that we use, uh, as it says here, designates this is a fully simulated rigid body. You're free to do whatever you like with it. So we can toss it around, it's affected by gravity. You can use some of Nape's um, uh, constraints on it and all sorts of fun things. Uh, yeah, where are constraints? Are they under physics? 
No. Oh, there they are. Constraints. Um, and um, they're a lot of fun, these dynamic things. So um, let's take a look at static. So what are static uh, bodies like? Um, this designates uh, or designate designates this is a static body. Uh, while it's contained in a space as a static body, you may not modify the body in any way except for to change its shape filters and materials as various optimizations are put in place, which depend on this contact. So basically, what that means is that um, as we get along in making a game, say we have some walls or uh, tiles in a tile-based game, uh, the tiles that make up the stage will primarily be static bodies. So say you have the earth um, or the ground, um, that would be a static body that doesn't move technically. So you can stand on it um, and whatnot, and it won't ever change or move, and it'll just stay there. Um, but say you want to have a tree that you can push over or something, then I think you'd want to make that a dynamic uh, body type. Um, kinematic is, is a kinematic rigid body. Uh, you're free to do whatever you like with it. A kinematic object is moved by a direct modification of its position and rotation. Its velocity, which is used in dynamic calculations, is updated to reflect the true velocity, as well as adding the offset supplied by the now kinematic velocity field to perform such feats as conveyor belts. Hmm, interesting. Um, I think a kinematic is probably just a dynamic body that uh, maybe interacts with other uh, bodies better. I don't really know much about those at the moment, but I'm sure we will have to deal with these in the future. But for now, let's just play with dynamic and static bodies. So let's take a look at our code. Let's add a static body something for our circle to collide with and uh, make this a little more interesting. So let's do this. Let's call it, um, uh, let's make a private, uh, okay, <laughs> private variable. And this is a, let's call it a floor. Um, and this is a body. Okay. And um, this floor will need a shape. Um, let's just call it a private variable. Um, uh, ugh, forgetting how to type. Uh, we'll just call it floor shape. Okay, now here, no, I guess we can just put it afterward here. Our floor will equal a new body. <coughs> and the body type will be, what do you think it'll be? Since it's a floor, will it be dynamic? Probably not. Kinematic? Uh, probably not. It will be static, of course. And uh, let's put its position at the bottom of our screen. Um, so uh, we'll need a new vector two. And it will be at, uh, let's just put that at zero. And its Y will be at the bottom of our screen, which uh, is technically 300. So let's put it there for now. Because 
in the future we'll be working inside of Flixel and it's being scaled up so it'll work at 300. So let's put it down at 300. So now that we have our body made, now it needs a shape. So let's see, floor shape will equal, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to give this a type. It's going to be a uh, polygon, I believe. Polygon equals, so the floor shape is a polygon. So it's going to equal a new polygon. And you see, so now polygons take local verts, a material. Um, actually, I don't think we worked with materials at all last time. But we'll get to those soon. So let's just say for now, we just need some local verts. So let's take a look at what it means. So we got... No, shape polygon let's see so local verts is a vector to list so vector to list oh it's just a list of vector twos <laughs> so it's yeah it's a list which uh, is a very basic data type. It's kind of like, it's a list. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> All right. So, um, but here's one thing we can do. Um, instead of typing in four new vector twos for each point in list, we actually have these static methods that will generate those for us. We have rectangle, or rect, where we can put in X and Y, which I believe will be the upper left corner of our box, and then a width and height for those. And then you have a box here which um, uh, will take a width and a height, and I believe uh, it will align. Actually, that's a good question. I was pretty sure it would just make a square, but if it takes a width and a height, maybe it'll make a rectangle or re based around something. Let's play with that and see what happens. And then we have regular, which I believe will, um, you can put all sorts of uh, points in there. Yeah, width, height, edge count. So yeah, maybe that'll make uh, polygons and whatnot. So actually, let's play with all of these and see what we get. So let's start with the rect. So we'll do polygon dot rect and that's a function. So x will be 0, y will be 0. I'm pretty sure that's in local to this new object that we made. Um, and then its width will be the width of the screen, so 400, because we're working in flixel and height. It will be sticking outside of the screen anyways, so um, let's just make it uh, 50. Um, it's not really important. And weak, I don't know what that does. What does that do? Let's take a look at that. So... Okay, well anyways, uh, we'll leave it as that. Um, we, now, so we have the red squigglies here, so we have to close that out again. So, um, we have our body, we have our shape. Um, now, we just need to add our shape to the body. So, floor, shapes, add, floor shape. 
Oh, oops. Floor shape. F L O R shape. Okay, there it is. All right. And we have to add this body to the space. So, floor. Oops, not floor shape. Space equals my space. Copyrighted by me. Okay, that's, I guess, maybe not really that funny, but I find it funny. Anyways, <coughs> let's run it and see if we did this correctly. Hey, look. Look at that. We have a floor. And it's static. Um, so as you can see, um, uh, it's just there <laughs> and it's colliding and our um, our original body our circle falls and it automatically collides because uh, that's what uh, the space calculates for us um, so let's um, play around with some of those other shapes that we saw before um, so let's copy this copy and let's comment that out and see what other those other polygons do so let's play with box so that takes a width let's say our width is the width of the screen which would be 400 I'm sorry and then the height let's say it's that 50 that we did before and let's see what that does for us. Okay. All right. So I guess the difference between a box and a rect is um, the center of this box is at uh, uh, the, um, the, the body that we put it in, which is at uh, 0, 0,300. I think the center of this box is at where this body is, so 0, 0,300. So I believe if we look at this, um, we probably ha we have the 150 uh, pixels going to the right and left. And I think since we have a height of 50, we have 25 pixels on the top and bottom of the point here at 0 or 300 so personally I like working with upper upper left corners so I think I will continue using rect but maybe working with the center is easier in certain situations and maybe some people like that better but uh, it's not for me next let's see what that other one did the shape then we need polygon and regular. Okay. So regular. And that takes a width. I guess let's make it 400. A height. Let's make that 50. Edge count. Um, let's just put four in for now. Angle offset uh, and weak. Uh, let's just go with what we have for now and see what that does. I imagine that'll result similar to box as is. Oh no. Interesting. So I believe that does give us polygon, er, uh, yeah, polygons, which I guess it is a polygon, but like maybe we can, if we put in five, we'll get a. Pentagon. Yeah, fancy that. So instead of 300, um, yeah, I guess the center of it is. I'm not sure where the center of it is. Oh, wait, yeah, it's not zero. So let's put it in that absolute center so put 400 300 there okay 
Okay, there it is. Oh wait, that's not the center. The center, <laughs> because we're working at half of 800, 600, the center would be 200, 150. So yeah, it looks like it's made a little on there so let's make it 50 50 and five-sided and there you go and then you have a regular polygon which means I don't know if you guys remember from geometry class you have your regular polygons which are your equal-sided but yet multi-sided polygons <laughs> So that's kind of cool. Didn't know about that. That could be useful. But let's stick with our one here. Oh, wait. I'm going to have to <laughs> move that again. Let's put it at the bottom. So x of 0 and at the bottom 300. Okay, so that was uh, uh, in it with um, making polygons. Let's see if there's anything else interesting in there <coughs> uh, with shapes. Um, I think circle, circle's pretty basic. Yeah, you just put in a radius and it, it makes that for you. Um, we have some other things. And okay, so um, as you may n notice, um, our circle just comes in and hits the ground and isn't very interesting. Let's um, spice things up. Um, in the next episode, under shape, let's look at um oh yeah here it is materials materials make things look and act much differently and make things more fun so i'll see you in the next episode